Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Presdale, and today I will be smoking Dale Istanbul. And this beautiful 5.5 by 54 ring gauge double Robusto or Robusto's Extra coming to us in partnership between Dale and Luciano. They decided to come up and co-blend this together. It also kind of reminds me of that Netflix uh, that Netflix movie with uh, Detective Perot when he's in Istanbul right before he arrives, right before he travels, I believe, on the Orient Express. I double checked the RH on the cigar. As you'll see in the overhead, we were at about 57, 58 when I did the overhead shot. Tested the RH right before smoking it and we were at 6162. The blend on this cigar is also extremely cool. It is Ecuadorian Corojo 99 leaf wrapper over a Pennsylvania broadleaf binder with a filler combination coming from Turkey, the Dominican Republic, and Kentucky. Right off of the cold draw, there's a lot of florality to this cigar. Elderflower notes, orange honey blossom. The Istanbul was sent over to the channel courtesy of Roger at Working Man Cigars. Shout out to Roger. I had seen last month Cigar Hound Dog's review on it and then he had spoken about Roger and him kind of going back and forth in our live stream about the Delay Istanbul and just how much Cigar Hound Dog enjoyed it, how much Roger enjoyed it. So I was very happy to see this in a follow-up bomb. So generous to the channel. Thank you so much, brother, for the support. I greatly appreciate that. Bready, fresh French bread kind of notes to it. A little bit of leather, touch of caramel sweetness, and then a good six or seven of pepper just on the retro hell. It's not enough to sting the nostrils, but it's there to let you know that you just lit up a cigar for sure. The florality that I spoke of on the cold draw seems to kind of be a thing of the past. It's at least muted by the intensity of the peppery notes, the bready notes, and the caramel sweetness on the cigar. On our Dale Istanbul, Man, this cigar has got some tremendous flavor on it. This is absolutely delicious. It has got creamy nuttiness, breadiness as far as the toast and the French bread all working together, almost like a King's Hawaiian sweet bread kind of roll. That topped off with some beautiful caramel vanilla sweetness as an undertone and just the faintest hint of black pepper spice on the retro hell. The finish on the cigar is long and pronounced with like a rich leather note to it. It's brought on by, I think, the combination of the caramel vanilla with the pepper, but that's kind of like that combination. You taste the leather notes to it, but they're well-balanced, delicious, rich, very creamy, very, you know, very creamy with good spice, medium to medium plus at the very most. As far as the body of the cigar, I'd venture to say more medium than medium plus, but the boldness and the expressiveness and the long finish actually make the cigar's body feel more intense than the act than the nicotine really is. And so far, even in the second third, the florality has now shined through. And on this stick, there's a ton of orange blossom, honey notes that come out of it, elderflower notes for those of you that are familiar with Saint Germain or the bartender's ketchup, as we like to call it. There's also a really nice array of creamy nuttiness and what I would say would be like a touch of rose water. When you get grenadine in your drinks, any type of like original recipe grenadine or house-made grenadine typically has a drop or two of either orange flower water or rose water to it. And it's just a great way to kind of add some florality to different cocktails, to different dishes that are out there. But I love the mixture between leather and florality kind of transitioning over and keeping you engaged, making you uh, very interested in what where the cigar journey is taking you and where it's where it's at and where it's planning on taking you throughout the journey. I think that that's a fantastic cigar and obviously a box worthy stick. The MSRP on these from what I could tell is somewhere in the $20 MSRP range, so it's not a cheap date, but for those of you that are fans of the Toro Terry Blanc, is the price range and the ballpark that you're playing in, but it's also the flavor aspect and the, the transitions that you're playing with. So it's nice when, even if you are a more expensive or a heavier MSRP, you're still delivering on the value and the experience in a way that is completely unique. For our pairing today, I have grabbed our Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao. This is a very traditional method of creating Curacao. Classic cocktails demand classic liqueurs and no liqueur is more classic than Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao. Crafted in consultation with cocktail historian Dave Wondrich, a base 
and based on a 19th century recipe. It is a traditional French triple sec, three separate distillations of spices and sec. Sec being the bitter peels of curacao oranges blended with brandy, unaged brandy, and Pierre Ferrand cognac. So you have got brandy as the base, unaged brandy to add some extra body and some vibrancy to it, and then the extra blended Pierre Ferrand cognac. Even entering the final third now, there's still a vibrant florality to the cigar that I wanted to match up pair for pair. One of the beauties of this on the finish is, if you taste a Grand Marnier before and you've tasted Cointreau before, they both have more sugar on the palate. They also both taste really rich, really heavy, whereas this is super light. It is something that you can drink by itself, and it's definitely something, as it was intended, that is to be mixing cocktails. Cocktails that call for orange curacao, the brandy crustas of the world, the margaritas of the world, right? Those that have triple sec, Grand Marnier, Cointreau, Curacao to that. I like this slightly better than my like Grand Marnier 100s when I have a lighter, more floral cigar. And that's why I chose it. I chose it because the fact that this blend is medium, it has the Corojo 99, working with that Turkish and Kentucky tobacco. And I don't want to mask that. I don't want to like overwhelm that. I'm not sure if it would, but I doubt it. But I just don't want to take any risks with it being too bold of a spirit and having too much cognac to it and too much like well-aged cognac to where it just completely overwhelms all the light floral aspects, the nuttiness, the confectionery, caramel, vanilla notes that are on this stick. Other pairings that I would recommend with the Istanbul you can definitely go with any of your coffees out there in the world. This is a fantastic one to pair up with some coffees. I think that some teas, like your black teas that EKB always talks about, or green teas, those are going to be fantastic pairings as well with this. I, I feel like the beauty of tea with this cigar is that you can really work on that floral note. And I, I, I say it over and over again with the cigar because it is a very unique, very interesting floral note just a great balance that you can achieve with tea and florality. So the point now where the scar is pretty much done and we were able to get it down to almost pretty much the nub. So overall, fantastic smoking experience. I thought that the first third, the second third were out of this world good. Love the transitions. Final third was also pretty good up until this point right here. I would give it a five pack recommendation and that's what I'm going to do. I would say five pack of these, something fun, something unique. It's something that you can give to the geekiest cigar smoker out there and be like, this is something you probably haven't tried, like myself. <laughs> Shout out to Roger over at Working Man Cigars once again. I'm sure that you have all seen their, uh, I'm sure that you have all seen Roger's stuff by now, but if not, go check him out over at Working Man Cigars. I'll leave a link below in the description to his channel. And uh, thank you all once again for liking, commenting, subscribing, continuing to grow the community here at Master Your Ash. I greatly appreciate all of you for that. Check us out on Patreon. So we'll be doing our giveaway at the end of the month. We do it every month at the end or the beginning, however you like to look at it. Follow Spotify and Rumble as well. Those are the backups should anything ever happen. And I look forward to catching you again for another Dale Istanbul Cigar Review.